Welcome aboard the Ear to Their podcast, the podcast that'll help you vacation like a pro in any Disney destination. For those of you standing, please sit down and hold on throughout our journey and get ready to learn how to have the time of your life. And now, here's your host, Phil Gramlich. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ear to Their podcast. I'm your host, Phil Gramlich, and I am also the owner and operator of Ear to Their Travel, a Disney specialized travel agency. It's my job. You know what? It's way, way stronger than that. It is my mission <laughs> in life to take away the stress, the anxiety, and all the time it takes to plan a Disney trip so you can focus on the fun things like having a great time with your family and friends and enjoying the magic. You can find this podcast, my blog, or request a free, no obligation quote over at eartotheirtravel.com. I would always like to remind you that everything that I do from planning your tickets to your hotel reservations to your dining to your fast passes, all of that, I take care of at absolutely no extra charge to you. That's right. I work for free. Well, let, let's not be crazy. <laughs> I work for free, but somebody pays me. It's just not you that actually pays me. Okay, this is episode number 65 for the week of April 17th, 2017. Now, grab a drink, grab a snack, and as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. Supersonic, idiotic, disconnected, not respected, who would ever really want to go and top that? Such a waste of pretty face, but hanging in your nose face, I wish that you would take a look and really stop that. Okay, so admittedly, this might be the weirdest opening song for the podcast ever, but I promise that this will all make sense in a minute, right? So if you don't know that song, that is Top That from the smash 1989 hit Teen Witch. It is a fantastic rap song that was done well before rap was cool. So I think the people in the movie, the, the cast members in the movie really missed their calling. They should have been rappers in the 90s. Anyway, why is this song relevant? Well, let me tell you. A couple of days ago, my wife and I were talking about which attractions are the best ones in all of the Disney parks in the United States. And we couldn't agree. We, we never agree on which attractions are the best, I guess because we have completely different criteria for why an attraction is good or why it isn't. That's why this week I wanted to bring my wife, Amy, back on the show so we could play a little game that we are kind of off the cuff <laughs> titling Disney Attractions Top That. All right, so as I was saying, back with me to talk about, well, to have the challenge of her life is <laughs> <laughs> my the Rapunzel to my Eugene, the Tiana to my Prince Naveen, the uh, Mulan, yeah, I did run, the Mulan <laughs> to my guy that Donny Osmond plays the voice of in <laughs> Mulan, my awesome wife, Amy. Amy, thanks for, for coming back on. Oh, no, thank you. I'm so excited because I'm very competitive, and this is all about being competitive and me winning, so I'm so in. You know, it's really funny is you just thank me for having you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're recording in the little recording studio in our house. That's really funny that you said thank I'm you. a very gracious person. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why I found that so funny. Okay. I don't either. So if you don't know, I, I mentioned in the opening song, you and I just listened to it so you can kind of get a feel for what we were going for. When I say you and I, I mean Ames, you and I, not you, the listener, and I have just listened to But you did too, actually, listener. You did listen to Top That. And if you don't know the movie, Teen Witch is about a teen witch, right? That's correct. Amy knows the movie a lot better than I do. But I watched the scene recently, the top that scene. And basically, there are guys rapping in their jean jackets outside of a car. And, That's correct. <laughs> and Teen Witch and her friend come down the road on their bikes. And Teen Witch's best friend wishes she could be as cool as the guys That's who are it. rapping. So somehow she uses her magical powers and turns her best friend into, 
like a gangster rapper slash Eminem. <laughs> and that's what you heard in the beginning of the of the episode, right? So there. basically, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're, we're trying to do is we're both going to come up with our top attraction from each park. And then the opposite person, well, one of us will come up with our top attraction. And then the other person gets the chance to top that, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, all right. So I think we rolled the dice. I'm going to go first here, right, Ames? Yes, that is wonderful. All right. So I'm going to go first. I'm hiding my computer screen so you can't see it. Okay. I don't want you to steal mine. And I'm also going to put my glasses on. I would on never steal yours because mine are already way better. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting my glasses on because this is not a video and uh, <laughs> I'm not afraid of how I look. Okay. So we're going to go from in order from the most recently opened uh, American Disney Park to the oldest Disney Park. So, of course, we're going to start off with Disney, not Disney's anymore. It's Disney. Changed, right? They changed. They took out the apostrophe S. Yes. Disney California Adventure. And of course, the. Top attraction in Disney's California Adventure is Radiator Springs Racers. Eh. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> First of all, we're going to have to set some ground rules. There's no buzzing <laughs> the guy who hosts the show. Go ahead, Radiator Springs Racers. Oh, thanks. Racers. I can go now? <laughs> okay. So Radiator Springs Racers. Okay. So it's test track, right? But it's way better. Better. Well, that. Ble- <laughs> better themed right and it puts you directly into the movie which is very cool uh it tells a complete story from the beginning to the end which a lot of attractions don't do that's true there's the big reveal right so you're in you're in one of two lanes as your phone makes noises and you're Sorry, messing us up here <laughs> recording what you were saying amy is recording just, i don't know as a backup siri, did it, I don't know. <laughs> siri is recording this conversation as a backup so <laughs> You're in one of the of two cars that kind of compete against each other in a race. And there's that big reveal, right, where you turn the corner. I think you make a left or a right. I don't know which way you're Doesn't matter. And there's a big reveal. The music kicks in. And there's a big reveal of the waterfall up ahead and the Cadillac Mountain Range. Yes, that's a good point. Very, very cool. The race at the end is awesome. You never know who's going to win. Scenery is awesome. Music is great. The ride at the end, like, like I said, the race at the end, you go from... Zero to 60, like that. I sat my fingers if you couldn't hear. <laughs> and it's awesome. And there's two different endings, right? So depending oh, on which lane you're that. in and which side of the race you're in. That's true. That's a good spin. There's two different endings to the attraction. That is a good spin. And you can win or you can lose. You can be a loser. Yeah, there's a lot of different options. You can be so a loser be a like experience. you will be tonight on this episode. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I'm topping that. So, no. okay. So, yeah. So, uh, Listen. Do you have anything you want to add about radio? No, I just agree that it's like it could be different. So like you can ride it over and over and have a different experience, which is good. And actually I have, you know, that comes in later for my list. But um, yeah, I think that that's a good point. I still have a superior pick, of course, obviously. Um, It's a little bit interesting because this isn't the only park in which this attraction you know, exists. Um, however, for me in California Adventure, my top pick is still Toy Story. I'm like Choo Choo Train. <laughs> <laughs> I did buzz you, so that was only fair. Um, Toy Story Midway Mania is my pick anywhere it exists. What? Oh, I'm shaking my head. Oh. <laughs> um, anywhere it exists because it is just great. Like, first of all, I was thinking about it tonight. First of all, the ride itself just not Attraction. even i know but it's but i actually i know i was thinking about that but i actually do mean ride because i don't mean you know shooting the gun getting score score you all mean that the movement of the vehicle. i mean the movement okay. yes the actual gotcha. ride. i mean the movement of the vehicle i remember because at one point i think i had both I, our kids were really little our twins and i had like one on my lap and one next to me i think or something whatever it was i didn't actually shoot the gun one time i just actually rode it and i was cracking up it's like so fast it swerves you and it's just a really cool experience even before you get you know to shoot things and then of course all the characters are in there and if you're at all a competitive person in any way, you're going to want to keep riding it, you know, the attraction all day until you either beat all the people in your party or beat the highest score of the day. And so it just makes it really enjoyable and fun. And I think it's the best attraction in either park that it's in. Yeah. 
I have to wholeheartedly disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that to yours. I, oh, I know. At the end. Okay. I, I just don't think you topped that. Okay. I just don't. I listen. I completely agree. It is a phenomenal attraction. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great attraction. It's, I know, and I argued it beautifully. Yes, and as <laughs> usual in our relationship, every time I try to talk, you were talking <laughs> instead. <laughs> so wait, can I? Can I? Okay, I can go. Um, you're looking at your phone at your next thing on your list, so I am able to talk. Well, wait, but aren't we picking? Well, let me finish. I want to talk about Toy Story Mania. That's what I mean. Are we picking who Toy won? Story Midway? In a moment, Toy Story Midway Mania. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it a lot. I, 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 well, we can't get to the other park that it's in yet, but I, I like it more at the other park. And the attraction is, is very, very similar uh, in the other park. And I don't know if we're counting Q. I know. I was going to say, is it but the I Q? Can't, I, see, this, sure, you can count the but Q. But Q's can be a completely different show, No, right? I totally agree. I think the Q counts. Like, if we're going to make this into a series, which if it, if any of you guys listen. <laughs> <laughs> and or enjoy it. Yeah, we would like to make it a series. I, I'd like to have Amy on the ugh, on the podcast more often, I guess. Uh, no, I had to. I had to act like I didn't really want to roll because she's sitting here. But he rolled course. his eyes, you guys. Just so you know, listeners, he rolled his eyes. Of course, I want her back on the show more and more often. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really? um, no, I'm kidding. But no, I, I do like it in the other park more. I, I like it in this one a lot, but it's not my favorite in the other park. Giving no, you a little tip. That's a good point. Me neither, actually. So I, and it's not my favorite in this park. So I still think that I topped you. All right. I'm going to be very fair. And I'm going to say, actually, that I think you did top. Okay. Which I had a feeling in this part that you would, because, oh, I should have started with this, lead with this, um, that I am a complete wimp um, when it comes to attractions. So I was actually. Not in life. You're. Thanks. Very strong in life, but you're a terrible wimp in the theme parks. (laughs) Just so you know, you guys, he was going to say a different word. I'm not sure if it was. I have a very, G, a very good G rating <laughs> on the show. Either way, um, so I'm total whip. So when I, any time that I have been on Radiator Springs Racers, I have had my eyes closed and have been screaming extremely loudly. So I don't think that I've given it a fair shot. So, but it sounds really fun from <laughs> the way you described it. So I'm going to say that yes, Phil, you taught me. All right, all right, one nothing for the good guys. All right, so but you're not going to win every single one. No, of course not. But I can't argue better because (laughs) it's my show. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so moving on to the second youngest theme park in uh, Disney theme park in the United States. Of course, we're going over to Disney's Animal Kingdom. And Ames, you were going first for what's the tagline for Animal Kingdom? It's got a name. Oh yeah, I don't. Not oh, that was not a zoo, but that's not. What not it was. a zoo was the old. Yeah, yeah, I, that was the first one. Right? I played it a lot on this on this show. The not a zoo. Remember the commercial? Not, not a zoo. The, yeah, not, yeah, I was gonna do. It. You did it perfectly. <laughs> not the zoo. I just remember then, it really well. They were like, and the guy had the, the crazy African uh, accent. And he was like, "Disney's Animal Kingdom is many things, but one thing it is not. It is not the zoo." I remember. That was a pretty good accent, wasn't that, it? Excellent. And you chopped my accent too. <laughs> I think I am going to start as a voice actor soon. This is really fun. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're going to waste no, so no, much time. Cool. Just I know. You're going to have to edit half jibber this. jabbering back and forth. People will be so bored if yeah, they heard all this. Okay. Either way, so I have a very unique pick for this one. So you're definitely <laughs> going to try to top me on this one. But I'm going to argue it. My pick for Animal Kingdom is actually going to be tough to be a bug. Okay. Which I know is an unusual pick. But guess what? It's awesome. So, first of all, it's really cool. Any 3D show, I think, is really cool because Disney does 3D effects. It's just, they really do it well. And um, I feel like, you know, because it is, as you said, a little more recent, um, it's just amazing. And they, you know, obviously they add that you get sprayed with water, but also like they add smells and the thing that I absolutely, the the stink bug, exactly what I was thinking of. And the thing that I think is just puts it over the top to top you, so to speak, is that there are bugs 
First of all, that sting you in the back, which is... Spoiler alert. Well, sorry, spoiler alert. there are two spoiler <laughs> alerts. I just talked to a wee bug, so I thought people wouldn't care as much okay. about being spoiled. And then the best, best, best part is that at the end, they there are, you feel, bugs crawling all over. You, well, you, you feel them on your hiney. But, <laughs> sorry, your butt. Ladies and gentlemen, Amy just said hiney on the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's better than butt. Anyway, you feel it on your butt. And it's you really feel it. You do. And it feels so real. And, you know, uh, if there are little kids, I've never had this personal experience, except that I totally have, that are a little scared <laughs> during the actual show, they all crack up at the end because you feel bugs on your butt or honey. Um, and I just know. But I really do think it's really great. Um, it's the only thing... Um, I think that I can think of that all the um, what is it, Bugs Life characters are, are in, and it's really um, just all encompassing. I think like you really kind of get into you know their world, and they they do kind of make you feel like you're a bug, and you have your bug eyes on, and it's just extremely well themed. And I I think personally, it's definitely the best 3D show. Um, no, he's also disagreeing with that. You should see his expression. But either way, that is my argument, and I think I did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, what's funny is I'm, I'm thinking now when I do the Facebook Live videos, people will see my expression when I disagree with something. <laughs> and they know what I, what exactly the face that I just made right yes, there. Yes, it's like squinty eyes. Yeah, it's like I'm kind of thinking about it, but nah, shaking my head slightly. Um, So all the cards on the table, right? I love it's tough to be a bug. I love Animal Kingdom, as you know. It's it was the first park I worked in. It's kind of like a child to me, a strange, very large <laughs> child that people visit every day. <laughs> I, I I do. I love that attraction. I, I I and it's a show which I didn't include any shows in mine. And I, I okay, we're gonna we're gonna see if I can top it. Because, okay, I doubt it. Because <laughs> I think I can on this one again. I think you're top. Yeah, I think I think here I might be. But this is the last one. Okay. So I'm so, first of all, I, I'm going to go with Expedition Everest, just so I really put it out there. But I can't believe you didn't do Kilimanjaro Safari. I know. I was thinking about it. But, I mean, that's boring. I wanted to do, like... Boring? 26 species of animals? Yeah, but everyone would think of that. I'm trying to think of something uh, different where box. people are like, wow, that's really impressive that you would think of that. I got you. <laughs> trying to impress people with your, your witty... Whippiness. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll go with Expedition Everest. So the, the main thing about this attraction is storytelling, right? Yes. And it's I say it about another attraction in a different park that is on Sunset Boulevard all the time, <laughs> that the attraction starts way before you're on the attraction that's itself. That's true. Okay? Yes, that's true. It is a great cue. You see it. That not a even different podcast of yours, though. Was great yeah, yeah. cues, right? I don't think I did a great... Yeah, I think Chuck and I did a... Chuck you Hardy did, and I, I think that you put... Podcast. Yeah, Everest is in there. Everest in there, yeah, Yeah. you had to. So yeah, that cue definitely makes the best cues. So amazing cue, but even before the cue, when you're that's true leaving Dino Land and walking towards Asia, and you see it across the 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 river, the lake, whatever that is, there, I already feel like you taught me. (laughs) When you see it, (laughs) it's it's awesome. And then here, like when you are about to be at Asia, there are this is going to be a weird thing, but people, you get me. I know that. The listener, the average listener, is a Disney nerd like me and gets this. You pass restrooms on your left-hand side if you're coming from Dino Land, right? Right. And there are little water fountains outside. Okay. And there's a sign under the water fountains that says, you know, hikers, fill your canteen oh, I see. here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the water on the mountain is not safe to drink. Yeah, that is pretty cool. It really that starts getting into the tells the story already for Everest, and you're not even near the attraction. I, I got it. You talked. No, me. no, no, no. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> we haven't even gotten on the rod yet. So again, the queue was awesome. The, you know, I've mentioned it before that you feel like you're actually going on a train up the mountain. They even put steam at the load area, but these are roller coaster cars, so there will be no steam. So they pump fake steam up through the train from underneath the track. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, and I mentioned that in a, in a Best Cues with Chuck because that was, I love that fact. Yeah, of course. Uh, listen, awesome projection effects. It goes forward, it goes backwards. The track is ruined. Spoiler alert for people who have not ridden the attraction yet. <laughs> Even the Disco Yeti, he's been in disco mode for 
I don't know how many years, ever since a couple months after the track or the uh, attraction opened, which Disco Mode, Disco Yeti is the nickname that he has. Right. Because he no longer moves. He now has a strong Yeah, I remember on him. him moving. Yeah. So actually, I don't think I've done it since he hasn't moved. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only did it once. Yeah. So we, Amy and I got to go during cast previews and got to see, we were both living in Orlando at the time and got to see when the Yeti actually. Like swung at your roller coaster. Car. Yeah, it was really awesome. Like he was like hanging was. off the. the I mean, I screamed the, the whole time. Yeah, but it was great. I think I screamed. I mean, it yeah. was it was pretty intense. So he used to actually reach out for you and like swing his arm over your head. Right, I as you that. like zoom by. Hasn't done that in a number of years. I hope. The rumors are that he, in order to fix the Yeti, a huge part of the ma- a hard part of the mountain has to be disassembled, because. He's tethered to like the foundation of the roller coaster, right? And they can't afford to have it down for. They so can't long, have, sure. afford to have it down. Is right. I I don't know if when Pandora opens, right, next month, that might be a good opportunity in May of 2017 if they'll be able to put that down. You know, after the kinks are worked out in Pandora, probably not until like Star Wars Land is open, right? I think because you're right. But anyway, uh, I think you're top. I don't even know. I I am topped. But I mean, you, you know what? Everest, I gave it a, Bugs Life. Come on. I gave it a really good try, I think. It's a good try. I really, you gave the old college try. I did. And I really argued a lot. Like, I, I was even like sweating a little bit to really try to make it. <laughs> it is a little warm in here. <laughs> no, I mean, to really get my point across to make it awesome. And I still love Tough to Be a Bug. But yes, I agree that once again, I am topped. I am. Two and but oh. this is it. That was I'm, the last one I'm giving. I'm going to be like Cal Ripken here. It's no, you streak. you don't have any left. I mean, I'm going to win all the rest. I am the Iron Man, Cal Ripken so Jr. Weep. No, it's all not right. a sweep, is it? Well, no, because I took two already. Darn it. So Whatever it is, sweep. I'm not great with sports analogies. I'm going to win the rest. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's go on to the next youngest park in uh, Disney Park in the old U.S. of A. And it's over at the formerly named Disney MGM Studios, now Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's still Disney's, right? Yeah. For I think now, it is. Yeah. For well, now. For now. Still Disney's Hollywood yes. Studios. And I am going with the attraction that I was alluding to a couple minutes ago. <laughs> the one that starts when you make that turn onto Sunset Boulevard. And it is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> that was even a weak buzz. Eh, okay. <laughs> Did a goat sneak into the, the room when I wasn't looking? I think I started to lose so, my voice yeah, a little. A very sick goat <laughs> who needs medication. I disagree wholeheartedly already. Although it's great. Go ahead. The goat needs Get ready to lose. Desperately. <laughs> he is losing his voice and his will to live. Okay. So the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror might be the most complete. Disney attraction ever built. It might be. Except for mine. It might be. So I don't know how you're going to top it. I already did. Like I said, okay. You throw me off my game. You throw me off. The emperor is getting thrown off his groove. He's losing his mojo. So, okay. Please continue. The floor is again, worse. Again, storytelling at its best from Sunset Boulevard to the outside part of the queue with the dried up water fountains and the plants and the, that are overgrown and the music. It's creepy. And then the indoor part of the queue with the dust and the the cups of coffee that were left on Hollywood, 1939. Wait, not not to give you even more, um, because I shouldn't be helping you, but you didn't even talk about the cast members outside who are amazing. I think they're great. Uh, Oh, really? I I think they're great. I've noticed, and and this is, I'm such. Oh, it's not as much. You know, and I I don't want to be that Disney, that guy that's, when I'm back in my day, I'm not like that at all. When it comes to Disney, I don't think that this is a bummer to say this because I love everything about that attraction. I think the cast members did a better job staying in character a little while ago. I I, I don't want to see smiles from my, no. from my Tower of Terror cast members. See, this is another. I want them to be a part of the story. I want them to be, you know, not depressed, but <laughs> kind of haunted. You know, you want them. Right. They've had some great. Some great cast members over the years. Oh my gosh! Who yes. are just damn right creepy. I agree. And now it, I, I'm not saying all the cast members are like this because that would be ridiculous. But a lot of them are cast members that are you know, college program or you know older retirees. And right. It's their it's their job for the summer. It's their job, and they're not into. And I I can I bet you could say this about a lot of attractions. 
Oh, and there, sure. There, are, of course, are the standouts that, that still do an amazing job. There's a guy there. I, I, I don't remember his name. Tall, skinny guy with a mustache. I know who you're talking about. Yep. He's been in the commercials for the Tower yes. of Terror. He's incredible. He is insanely good. He is. He's, I, I believe he's still there. I, I'm so sorry. I don't know his name. I remember like playing a game with my friends trying to make him laugh or make him smile, and yeah, he no. can't do it. No, that guy was no joke. Yeah, he was. And he was in character, yeah, and I love that. So, yeah, I, I agree that when you get the good... The, and they're, they're not bad cast members who aren't in character at all. They're just not in character. Right. And it doesn't I, add that to the one, obvious. Right. And that one in Haunted Mansion are the two right. that need the, char- the cast members to kind of be in character inside the queue. To oh, kind of definitely. Make, it adds to the experience. But anyway. For sure. Uh, <laughs> what's really funny, I just looked at my last note on the Tower of Terror. And it says, literally, I'll show you right now. Cast members can really make or break the experience depending on how in character they are. We are simpatico. Oh, that is really... I didn't read that at all. No, I she did not take a look at my monitor. That was awesome. That was awesome. And I, don't, uh, I don't think it can be topped. It can't be. Oh, are you done already? Yeah, I mean, I, I really. I mean, what else do I have to, to, to say with that? Say, oh, man, that's a shame that I'm about to lose because I am going for Star Tours. Bum, bum, bum. Wow. You I lose, not, baby. I did not see Star Tours. Really? Yeah, I, I thought, I, I don't know, I saw maybe Bear in a Big Blue House coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> the saddest part is, initially I was going to do like the Disney Junior Live on I know. stage. See, I know, I know how your, because, your mind works. You know, I'm so used to going with kids. But actually, I remember saying to you, is after I thought of that, saying to you, I'm doing this list wrong. It's not what I think, right. you know, are the best attractions. For our particular family or whatever, it's generally what is probably the best attraction in the park. Um, that having been said, I didn't do something that I barely ever ride, like Tower of Terror or Expedition Everest, because that's not fair. But I still do think that Star Tours tops it. Um, so especially, be, you know, because it's a little bit newer. And so I know I feel bad. I don't want to do too many spoilers, you know, but basically... It's incredible because it's not every a new time attraction, so. I know, I know, but still. and there's your spoiler alert, so don't worry about it. <laughs> All I'm saying is that every time you go, you have a chance to have a different, you know, seeing a different story um, from a different movie, and all six of them, all six of the, you know, actual Star Wars or Star Wars movies are in there, right? Well, let's 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 start getting nerdy. Oh no, there are actually seven Star Wars movies. Okay, is that Rogue One? No. Okay. That's The Force Awakens. <laughs> with enough. number eight, uh, The Last Jedi coming out oh, right, I at forgot. Christmas. Okay. But so The Force Awakens obviously isn't in there. So you'd, is be, you'd be wrong again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It wasn't there. So there is a scene where Finn is uh, flying the Millennium Falcon or piloting the Millennium this Falcon. This is, by the way, a huge spoiler. But go on. So, no, it's not because I've talked about But you're before. also proving my point that this is the best attraction. In Hollywood Studios, um, no. But- so yeah, so BB, BB8 and Finn are both both make appearances. So you could say that yes, there are characters from all seven films in this attraction. Right. So basically, you can. For me, part of what makes <laughs> and I realize how much of a nerd I sound. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no Star Wars. No. <laughs> but for me, what you know, a big part of what makes an attraction. The, the best, so to speak, um, is, you know, the ability, sorry, and desire, <laughs> it's Siri again, <laughs> the ability and desire to ride it over and over. And certainly, right. I feel that as soon as you go on Star Tours, as soon as you get off, you're like, oh, I want to do that again to see, you know, which scene I get and is it a different movie? Um, and also, obviously, just the technology of the ride itself is fairly unique and, um so you know all-encompassing and um yeah just seeing the characters and hearing the music and experiencing the motion of the ride it's just the best ride or best attraction sorry in the park do you agree uh, <laughs> see that's tough for me because i love 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 star wars love 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 star tours i'm going to give you the point yes the circle gets the square. <laughs> <laughs> One 
I mean, two to one. Yeah, don't, don't be. I'm also not good at it. If you start giving score backwards, we're going to have to stop the podcast right now because you're not going to give me a score either, apparently. Uh, so. So you'll get the point for that one. Thank you. But reluctantly and not happily, but I'll give it so up. But so deservedly. Yeah, I think it's because I feel bad for you. <laughs> you, you don't want to get swept. See? That's oh, used correctly. okay. <laughs> That's how you do that. All right, so moving over to the next youngest park on the roster, the one that opened on October 1st, 1981. 80, close, 1982. Oh, And it is Epcot, of course, or as it was previously known, Epcot Center. Like I said, center. I did. Because I usually would say center, but I tried to (laughs) pronounce it better. (laughs) Anyway, so moving over to Epcot. And is it my turn to go first? Nope, it's mine. Are you are you telling me the truth? I'm positive because okay. I planned it so that like, I could do this one. So you I looked, I steal looked, mine. I looked at my dear wife, and she gave me this look like I could be telling you the truth or I could be lying. No, it doesn't matter. I'm I going. don't even have an alternate because I said, "Okay, you start so that I can do Epcot because I of course picked Soren, and I already topped you." So <laughs> no, it's just you know, it's incredible. So. Again, I don't want to do, you know, too many spoilers, um, but particularly with the new effects between each scene, oh my goodness, I'm not going to tell you what happens because it's too fun to experience it yourself, but it's just, it's hilarious, but it's also so well done, and I don't even know how they manage it, but it's just amazing. Um, And then the smells just draw you into each scene that really make you feel like you're there. Remember, previously there were only a couple of smells, am I right? Yeah, there was a few. There was the the orange, the oranges. Oh, the that was the best. So pine memorable. trees, the ocean. But now I think each scene has a different smell. They, they, I'm not off the top of my head. I don't know. But right, there's a but lot there's of certainly more. Um, and it really does make you feel like you're there. And it's also the only attraction of its kind that I know of anywhere. Um, but yeah, until, it's, it's until the the new Pandora one, the Banshee ride opens. Is it similar? Yeah, so that's going to be kind of be a soaring. But you're buckled into the back of a banshee. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I and you wear you like me 3D. What's really cool is you're gonna. Oh, wear, you wear 3D. Oh, that's instead cool. Instead of 3D glasses, they're like almost like a ski goggle that goes over your glasses. Oh, fun! So kids like Alexa, our daughter. Oh yes. They don't because you're bouncing around a lot on a banshee. You don't have to wear two sets of glasses. It's actually something that'll fit over your glasses. So it's pretty cool. Really smart. Yeah. yeah so so yeah. So it is a Soren like system. Okay. This is what it'll be. But anyway. Well, right now there's <laughs> that does true. not exist yet. No, but it is it's so unique and um it's just it's incredible because you know, since you go up obviously um in the air and your feet are just dangling and it kind of pushes you forward, you really do feel like you're going into each scene. Um and it's just amazing and so fun and I I feel it's another one that you want to experience kind of over and over because for me at least I'm laughing sometimes I'm closing my eyes um and so I kind of feel like I miss it um and so it's just really fun to keep experiencing it and that's all I have yeah I, don't know I, if, I think that's all I need to say I don't know if I can <laughs> I don't know if I can top it seriously I probably can't top it but I'm going to try it a second okay but I have to agree with pretty much everything you said so they took the old Soren was, you know, originally Soren over California, out in California Adventure. That's where it started. It's so much better than the original, and I love the I agree. original. I, I did too. Loved it. I, I still would have said the original was the yeah, best I agree as well. I agree, the but the, o- the old film was dated, and you could see little marks in it as you yes, watched you it. Could. And it kind of mm-hmm. ruined the illusion a little bit. I agree. 
because it was actual projection technology, not the digital projection right. technology that they have now. So it in digital HD now is insanely cool. Like the colors and this and the, just the sights and everything you get from being on that attraction now, it blows your mind. It, it's so cool. Like being like flying over the Eiffel Tower and the Taj Mahal. Yeah, and, it's true. And like the Serengeti in Africa. And it's amazing. Oh, yeah. I forgot that part, too. I love in the beginning when they show you the map and they show you all the different places yeah, you're going to go. Yeah, in the queue. Yeah, yeah, That is really cool. Oh, and is it the queue? I'm it's sorry. in the queue when you're standing you're outside. Right, yeah, they right. had the map. And and they kept Patrick Warburton. I know. That was awesome. Putty, I would have missed him. I would have missed Seinfeld. him. Yeah. <laughs> I think they need to keep him. And I agree. The other thing I wanted to mention, too, was the old soundtrack. I loved it. It was one of my favorite soundtracks in all and on any Disney attraction ever. Just the music. We listened to it in our car. That's like, true. My kids love it. <laughs> yep. It, and they stayed really true to that kind of feel. It's a different song. It's a different soundtrack now. But it sounds like it's just in that. In, like It could be a continuation of that first soundtrack. Yes. It's awesome. And it sounds you know, very much like the original. So, yeah, I, I love Soren. I'm going to try to top it. And I'm, I'm going to do my best. I'm not going to half-heart this one. No. But I'm going to try. And the reason mine is going to top Soren is because mine is an opening day Epcot attraction. Okay. Yep. I know where you're going. And it is a classic. It is the quintessential Epcot attraction. You're going to get no argument from me. And it's Spaceship Earth. That is ve- if, if you're going to top Soren, that's what you're at least going to try with. Yeah. I agree. I love, love, love Spaceship Earth. Now, now you and I, I think, are just complete we <laughs> i think even before we started dating we bonded over spaceship earth we that's were both true huge spaceship earth fans from day one when we met i i, I just love the attraction Me i love too. the nostalgia of it mm-hmm. but it's the nostalgia but then it, it's again it, it's all the new stuff too yes they've done a really good job revamping it they have they've kept it current they've kept it new they've, they've refreshed the animatronics and You're the right. scenes but it still very much feels like it did when i first went on it in 1991, I guess, would have been the first time I, I ever went on it. Right. Mm-hmm. It would have been. Uh, like, I love the animatronics. They're phenomenal. One thing I miss, I'll have to admit, is Jeremy Irons' Me too. Narration. Me too. Judy Dench is fine. Not the same. She, yeah, she's fine. Dame Judy Dench. I'm sorry if you're listening. <laughs> Miss Dench. Wouldn't that be great and yeah. terrible because you were just not that nice about her? <laughs> so, Miss Dench, Dame, Dame Dench. That's Dench, right? It sounds weird. That's right. When you say it so many you times, it, many then you times, can't yeah. it doesn't sound like a real word anymore. Uh, so Dame Judy Dench, if you are listening, shoot me a Facebook friend request. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> but anyway, she does. Maybe she'll want you to play her next trip. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> I think, you know, Disney, they probably do a great job with the tour guides, but I know a lot about Disney. So uh, Judy, hit me up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, I can't pull off hit me up, can I? Definitely not. <laughs> so, but she did. She did uh, give us the information that the Phoenicians invented the alphabet, right? That's kind of cool. That is good information. Is it believable? I don't know, but that's what she says on the track. <laughs> so yeah, I do miss one other thing that I miss. See, here's the thing: I'm trying to top you, but then I'm burying some parts of the attraction. Right? It's true. The other thing I miss. The video at the end is fine. It's a nice little interactive thing that you can do in the attraction. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> I do miss the audio animatronics on a way backwards, back down the hill oh, at I the end too. of the attraction. Like I said, the video is fine. It's it's an interactive little fun thing to play with. You can do it in different languages. So, if you want to do the attraction in Portuguese, you can. It has a whole <laughs> nar- narration in Portuguese or Chinese or whatever language. True, and it is super to. fun for kids, I think, that Yeah, but part. for an adult, you do it a couple times, and you're like, all right, you, you've done it. You're over it, yeah. I miss the, <laughs> the virtual reality of the mom talking to the child on a computer, like, across the planet. I miss that part so much. Yeah, and I miss, like, the, the playing video games with each other over the internet, and, like, yes. all that stuff that they used to show. Mm-hmm. I they do were that. actual, you know, animatronics, and it was cool, and it was a better ending. So... Yeah, that I love Spaceship Earth. I, I hate to bring up things to bum me out about it. <laughs> no, and I I'm love trying, it too. I'm trying to top it. Listen, it's a great attraction. Oh, you know what scene I love, and this is really weird to bring up, is it's not weird to bring up because it's any attraction, but it's weird <laughs> to bring up at the end. But I love when you were going through like the '60s, and on your, your on your left hand side of the of your vehicle, 
the family is all lying around in like the 60s style living room watching the man the arm oh, from yes. man of the moon i remember that oh and, yeah oh it's such a cool and it, it, it it's still not you kind of get no but it's still there no no oh cool you kind of get like goosebumps like it's like because you and i weren't alive to see you know the arm from well you might have been i was not. <laughs> i knew he was gonna say that <laughs> so but we didn't see it we didn't get to see that live so every time you ride that attraction you kind of get to like relive that moment it's cool it, it is very and very cool. very cool and You're right of course, you get the giant computer with the lady with the huge hair standing in front of the <laughs> massive okay. computer. No, I love that. Yeah, I do too. I love, I love the animatronics. I love the scenes. So, yeah, let's end it on a good note. Spaceship Earth tops Soren. Except that it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to you. I got to go to too. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I tied it up, baby. I, I wouldn't get cocky. I get cocky. Because <laughs> we, have, we have two more parks. Right. I just realized this could end in a tie. That would be. Oh well, then the listeners have to decide. All right, let's see how this ends. Oh, we'll, that's we'll, fun. We'll try, we'll try to decide. Yeah, but we have to be honest. Yes. Yeah. I'm always honest. That's my, true. That's actually, not, that's actually your a problem that I have. Greatest <laughs> quality, and also sometimes your biggest downfall. Yeah, that's, that's true. I've it is told, true. I've been told both. Okay. <laughs> so, am I kicking this one off the next? You part? sure okay. are, buddy. So we're going over to the second oldest park in the united states and it is it opened on october 1st aims what year 1971 yes thank <laughs> I didn't you even have a guess <laughs> 1971 is the year and it is the magic kingdom oh no i'm i'm sadly sadly mistaken it is no longer the oh, magic you're kingdom right. it is now just simply known as magic kingdom which I do have to admit, I always did call it Magic Kingdom. I don't remember calling it the Magic Kingdom. I only talk. I only call it the Magic Kingdom when I'm talking about it. Like we're heading over to the Magic Kingdom. I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's I just, just have never heard you say that. I, I think I have. That's fine. All right. So let me go with <laughs> agree my, to disagree. Okay. <laughs> let me get to my pick at Magic Kingdom. Thank you. And it is another opening day attraction. It is classic. It is Disney animated movie like history. It is, of course, in Fantasyland, Peter Pan's Flight. That's a great pick. The number one attraction. Well, that's not true. But <laughs> <laughs> the untoppable, we'll say that, attraction in Magic Kingdom. So here's what's awesome about it. Well. I, w- I want to say the queue, and I'm going to add the queue that it's awesome because it's so much better now that they added the interactive queue. That's very true. With all the, the cool elements and the when you're in the in the shadows and they put the hats on your head and Tinkerbell flying around and you're in the Darling Children's Nursery. And- oh wait, I don't know if I've done the queue. No, I haven't. Queue? No, because we always fast pass it. So actually, I have no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> but it sounds really cool. That's true. They I definitely I, needed an interactive queue. They for did. Sure. They needed a queue that was in air conditioning for a bit of it because I agree. Those queues in Fantasyland get blazing hot because obviously you can't air condition outside, and a lot of them are outside. So it's a really, really good addition. What they did was they demolished the bathrooms that were over there. Okay. And they put the they didn't put the queue in the bathroom. <laughs> and that would be really. Weird. You're not just walking through the ladies' room and there's a darling <laughs> nursery in there. Put they, a hat on. They they gutted it and they they put the interactive queue where the restrooms used to be. And that's why you have the Tangled restroom area. Across oh, I the love the there. Tangled restroom area. Which, can we agree that, that Rapunzel needs more than a Yeah, bathroom? she totally got the shaft. Like, she needs something. She yes. Needs, it's beautiful. It's a cool oh, section of the park. Oh, it's very cool. They I shouldn't it. take it out, but no, just add something else. No, I love the music. I love the lanterns. Now, have you seen that they can do the lantern picture? No. Night? There's a new photo pass picture. If listeners, if you haven't seen this, it's awesome. Where the uh you at night the photo pass photographer will have a lantern that you can hold that looks like oh wow it looks like you're releasing it into the sky oh, that's so cool and it'll take a picture over in that oh, area oh that is it's cool. very very cool sorry not on the subject <laughs> no oh my god we're way off the subject <laughs> <laughs> for a second you thought you were arguing i was talking restrooms. about tangle i was like yeah this is the better bathroom and it's way better than the ones over at pinocchio's village house <laughs> um <laughs> The bathrooms at City Hall have nothing on this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, back to Peter Pan's flight. Again, the new interactive queue is awesome. Classic attraction brought over from Disneyland. 
for the parks opening in 71. That just everything from the start of it, where you're in the Darling Nursery, you fly out the window over Nana and her doghouse, over the Darling family car, over the streets of London with Big Ben. That part by itself is amazing. With the That's cars, very true. You're right about that. The cars that. below you, which is like the simplest uh, special effect ever. But it's so there's, cool every time. If I'm, There's bicycle, literally bicycle chains. I know. That are rolling around. That have like uh, black, white paint on them to look yeah, like cars. That is really cool. It's amazing. And it, it looks is. like there's cars driving around. It's, a, it's an incredible effect that they had since 1955 in Disney. Right. I mean, it's crazy right. how old that effect is and how... Amazing how effective it is. <laughs> right. Like when you're flying over London, you're literally flying over London. You are, you're right. There's no your mind, it's almost impossible. I dare you <laughs> <laughs> to try to convince yourself that you're not. It's amazing. No, I agree with and you. And then when you get to Neverland and you see the Lost Boys and you see, you know, the the, the pirate ship and Captain Hook and Peter Pan sword fighting and then TikTok Karak comes. Come on. Try to top. I you know what? I dare you <laughs> try to top Peter Pan's flight. Top this. You can't. Well, I am going to top it, but I will say, just because I feel bad for you, because I already know that I won this particular one, um, the reason that I'm going to say you did do a very good job and you were close is because obviously many, many people agree with you because it's such a long line every time you go. True. So a lot of people agree with you, but not most, because most agree that the top ride in Magic Kingdom dun, 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 is Splash Mountain. Obviously. So, okay. <laughs> just I so want to you hear know, I got closer to the microphone when I said obviously. So, I'm sure everyone appreciates it. First of all, I want to say that. I, I want to hear the argument because I want to see how you can beat mine because mine was compelling. And it was. And I was drawn in. For a minute, I was like, dude, this guy has me. But then I was like, wait, <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> this random stranger. Um, so, first of all, the music alone makes you so happy. Even if you are a total wimp like me, and you spend almost the entire ride completely dreading the last final drop, you still can't help but sing it along to Happy Place. No, that's not right. Laughing Place. And just dancing a little bit, even when you're like, the oh my gosh, known, this is so scary. Lesser known. <laughs> happy Place. Song that was written by the Sherman Brothers. But I mean, happy place. <laughs> but it does kind of bring you to a happy place. You're like listening to the music and you're like, oh, this is so wonderful and harmless. How could it ever be absolutely terrifying later? Um, <laughs> and just even the characters, just the details of all of the characters and all of the scenes. And you go through the caves. I mean, it's just awesome. So by the time you get to the first drop, you're like, oh, okay, well, this is not so bad. I mean, that's probably gonna do it for it um but then if you're not a wimp you're like Ugh, i wish i had more so then you get to the second drop which i think is a little more intense i don't even know because i'm so nervous yeah, it's like an up one. and down kind of thing it goes down a hill and then up and then back right. down so you're yeah. like a little more impressed and obviously then i will have to say that even though <laughs> i am really am terrified legitimately of the final drop it's also something that makes me crack up and like just i actually do enjoy it even as i'm screaming and sometimes i do scream of things that I should not say out loud, and won't especially be on this with children, <laughs> which there almost always are children there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it's hilarious and you're cracking up and you're, you know, soaked with water and it's, it's really unbelievable. Um, and again, pretty unique if I'm correct in saying so. Um, and I just, you know, I mean, a as you always say, like, walking towards the ride or walking past it. I mean, you can always hear people screaming and you can kind of see a lot of times, actually, we just stand by it and just watch people yep. <laughs> go down and we watch them get wet and we watch their reactions and take pictures. And so all it, again, it's, it really is all encompassing. Um, and, you know, the queue I think is wonderful and you really do get into the mood. The queue is awesome unless it's August or July. That's true. Or too. June. However, or May. That, or September. <laughs> that is not what we are currently discussing. Um, the heat is not going to be factored in to the fact that everybody one, knows Central Florida is hot. It's no that's surprise. correct. Either way, um, no, I really and and also it's really great because it's Song in the South, which I don't think is featured anywhere else. Even the characters from there, it's very rare to see 
Yeah, I mean, I've seen the the rare uh, character's appearance during like the marathon, right, and a half marathon. Right. Uh, I've also seen Brer Fox. And I was going to say, I think you used to Rabbit. see Brer Fox and Brer Rabbit. Well, I've seen them over at weirdly enough at Animal Kingdom at Dino Land at like okay. a dance party. They came I feel out like a long time ago you used to see them. Yeah, in I think Kingdom. I think they I were they were seen a little more often back in the day. Yes, now you really. But they're, can't yeah, find they're them the, they're the rare. They're on the rare side. You don't see them much. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a that's a great pick. I. I Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to say, so basically, (laughs) (laughs) for uh, an attraction to scare me so much and still make me say it's so great, obviously makes it a top attraction. Done. Boom. Mic dropped. I won. So do you want to host the show? Do you want to just... (laughs) Sure. Can you move over a little bit? (laughs) With your host, Amy Gramlick, instead of Phil Gramlick. Let's go. I mean, I think a lot of people would agree that I am... No, I'm just kidding. No, you are amazing, but I do think that I got you in this category. So, a couple things about Splash Mountain but before we decide who won, because I didn't even give. Did I give? I did give mine. I'm like, I'm looking ahead. I'm looking ahead too far. A couple things about Splash Mountain. No, you did very a very compelling oh, job with Peter Pan. I know, I did. That's true. <laughs> I don't doubt. I don't doubt how well I did. I no, know I did. Of course well. not. <laughs> and I think if if I was beaten, it's only because the attraction. Is better than Not the one the I argument? presented. The argument was fine, but I think a monkey could have made that argument. <laughs> you know that we still live together, that's, right? That's after this, point. yeah, yeah. <laughs> after this, you still have to go into the room with me <laughs> and clean up eight thousand Legos on that's the floor. That's a true story. And as any parent who is listening right now knows, we are both sitting in our in the studio right now with socks on, no <laughs> shoes. And our playroom is a minefield of Legos. And you got to be careful when you're cleaning up those Legos, man. Anyway, that was just off the top. Off a Lego the... under the knee is one of the most painful things. Oh, it was way worse than stepping oh, way on way worse than the foot. When you kneel on a Lego. It's the worst oh, pain. man. You can't even believe it. Oh, anyway. Sorry for you guys who don't have kids. <laughs> if you don't have kids, go buy Try it. Buy Legos tomorrow. <laughs> then you'll understand. Get the little square ones. Get the little. That's the little Yeah, ones. the little square That's ones. That's what gets you. For the four primes. Oh, it's the worst. Step on it first, and then kneel on it, and see which one's worse. I think kneeling is worse. Okay, for sure. <laughs> anyway, the strange places that we go on this <laughs> podcast. Okay, so I have to agree. I think you, you, you did. You got me because Yay. I think you're right. I think Splash Mountain is the better attraction. But Peter Pan is right, right up there. I will give that to you. It is, and it. It, you're confusing me because I'm trying to talk about Splash Mountain. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, looking at my notes I'm to remember. I'm still nice. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. You're trying to. Yeah, it's fine. I gave you the point already. <laughs> Circle gets the square again. So, again, yeah, t- the, the story is phenomenal. Uh, like I said, the queue is good if it's not a million degrees. I love the queue. I love Br'er, I do too. Br'er uh, Frog oh, on his yes. rocking chair in the queue. Oh, that part is I love cool. the music. I think mm-hmm. it sets it up really perfectly. But... There are sections that are not shaded and they're in a blazing sun. No, you're right. And it can be really long. Yeah, it can be. You can wait out there for 90 minutes. You can. And it, it can get hot. But I agree. So I, I'd recommend fast passing it if you're going to do it, uh, mm-hmm. which we always do. And fast pass Peter Pan, although you're right. No, now I, I think wait, wait in line for Peter Pan. To now. see the interactive. I, I'm happy with waiting in line to see that queue. I, I'll, I'll sit in that queue all day. Uh, unless it's like a 75 minute wait and then. That's too long. Yeah, but you don't know that. So maybe you should fast pass it. Fast pass it for your first. Day of Magic Kingdom on your second day, wait in line. Uh, so again, you, you were right about the music at Spl- on Splash Mountain, phenomenal. Sucking your head all day. Like you hear something do that, you can't, or Laughing Place or right. Happy Place, whatever you were saying. <laughs> the other very classic song, but no, Either it, one? yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you, you get it. The, the drop is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, everything's great. The, I completely agree with you. So you win, you get the point. I don't know who's going first. I keep losing track. I am. You, okay, so we're going over. To the original for our last pick, the original Disney theme park. The original theme park, really? Yes. There was never a theme park before Walt Disney opened Disneyland on. Wait. Oh, wait. I know this. Let's go. What do you got? I know it's 1955. That's right. What date? Seven, something seven. That's right. There's a seven in there. Oh, no. I don't July. Ah, oh, July 17th. 17th. 1955. No, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. I only had 55. 7, 7, 17, 55 was the opening day of Disneyland. And 
Amy, Elizabeth, you are first, and, and then I will top it, and we will tie. Because <laughs> there's no way you're topping <laughs> me on this one. Well, I don't know about that, because I have a really classic ride. And um, this is currently, or I shouldn't say currently, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear her hitting Siri every 30 seconds. I don't mean to. This is why I don't invite her in the new podcast studio very This often. is why? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, anyway, you used to be able to enjoy so much the, <laughs> this attraction um, in Magic Kingdom in Disney World, and it was replaced. You can't tell, um, but I'm extremely bitter about that. However, you can still enjoy it. As long and as often as you would like in Disneyland, which is Mr. Toe's Wild Ride. Hello, it's amazing. So, <laughs> it's just an incredible, it's just great. And I want to say, first of all, my main reason that I feel like you're not going to be able to top it is where else in Disney is it okay to have kids drink and drive? Because essentially what you do is, uh, I'm just explaining it because I don't know how many people actually (laughs) still remember or go on this attraction. So basically you go into the car and you are are transformed into Mr. Toad, am I right? You're J. Thaddeus Toad. Yes. Right, and you you are driving the vehicle, so at one point you get fired from your job, so you um, consume some alcoholic beverages, but you continue to drive. Oh um, well, yeah, I mean, you have to stay in a vehicle the entire time. That's it's, a good point. You can't just big, escape it. It's a big Disneyland rule. It's a really good point. <laughs> However, um, it is so fun because it's really not very PC, because then you go through fire and you're in hell. Yeah, you, you do end up in hell, that's true. Which is really a little bit amazing that it's, it's terrifying just it's oh it's completely terrifying oh my gosh we brought our friend's kids and um she was how old was she uh, one and a half i think she was she was just sobbing and we felt so <laughs> bad um, <laughs> we didn't even think about it by the way friends kids i know for friends not friends kids the kids aren't listening to this friends you know who you are you should be ashamed of yourselves. Also, we're really sorry because it was probably my idea to go on it. And you really shouldn't be ashamed of yourselves. I'm kidding. No, totally kidding. But no, it, it's just, it is actually, to be totally honest, I think that's part of what for me makes it the top because it is so on PC and it's the only attraction that I can think of in Disney that really is. And it just kind of somehow slipped under the radar um, because they have made so many modifications and updates. Uh, two other attractions. And they've never updated this. And they've never updated it, and they never should, by the way. Never should. Disney executives, if you're listening, don't update it. Um, but it is, and it's it's really cool. And this is another um, attraction where I don't think that there's anything else. This is the one in the Willows, right? Uh, yeah. And there's... I think there's... The, the Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Oh, okay. That's what the movie is. Well, either way, I don't think that there are any. There's like yeah, eventually no they come out and introduce the in characters. No, no. So I mean, you get to have this horseman uh, in oh. Walt Disney World. Oh, yes, you're right. At Halloween. Other than that, though, so yeah. There's no I, Ichabod strolling down the street. I feel like alcohol, driving while intoxicated, going to hell. That is the top attraction for me in Disneyland. You have the floor, my hand. See. I'm going to name drop really quickly. And I talked to Lee Cockrell. <laughs> uh, that former is name VP, dropping. Former VP of Walt Disney World Operations. And uh, a heck of a nice guy, by the way. Super nice. Super cool to come on, on the podcast. I don't remember the episode, but you can kind of just go. <laughs> I want to tell you what episode it is, but I don't remember off the top of my head. So Google Ear to Their Podcast, Lee Cockrell. It's, there's the interview. So he and I were talking about when they replaced Mr. Toad's Wild Ride in Magic Kingdom. And he said he got so much hate now. Yes. And, and so much. I wasn't alone. <laughs> and so much backlash. And, and he, you know, and the one in Magic Kingdom actually was more, I don't want to say successful, but it had a higher capacity than one at Disneyland. Right. It was more popular. Maybe, but because what I was saying is, this is what Amy does, guys. She, she finishes my sentences, not in a we good way. We finish each other's. Not, not that way. 
<laughs> we're not Hans and Anna when Hans is scheming to take over Arendelle. What I was going to say was, <laughs> he, uh, the, actually, the attraction in Walt Disney World had a higher capacity because there were two tracks. I don't know if you remember that. And because it was more popular. There were two tracks that went in the two different directions. <laughs> right. No, I do remember so it was that. Almost, it was like actually oh, two yes, different attractions, really. I do really. remember that. Yes. That was, oh, wow, I should have put that in. <laughs> and it was that system was designed by another gentleman I had on the podcast. Oh, yes. I'm going to name it, name drop again. Disney legend Rolly Crump he, he came, up, Disney legend. came up with that. Uh, with that, I, So Lee Cockrell is not a legend, but he has a window on Main Street. But uh, yeah, so Rolly Crump did come up with that idea. So anyway, Lee, Lee was telling me that he got just tons of, of hate mail for that. And it was a big, big thing when they closed Mr. Toad's Wild Ride at the Magic Kingdom. Or I'm sorry, at Magic Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> oh, I guess you do use it when you talk about I it. I do. See, there it is. <laughs> So, but I, I have to say that it is cardboard cutouts, basically, that you're driving through, That's right? That's what I love. And it, they... it hasn't changed since 55. And except for the exterior, the exterior is now that very cool right. stone house right. work exterior in Fantasyland and Disneyland. But I just feel like you're proving my point <laughs> that the whole attraction is, I don't care. Like, I don't give a hoot essentially, um, <laughs> to be G-rated. Because even they're like, oh, it's cardboard cutouts. What, what? You want us to change it? No, thanks. We are the best that we can be, and we're not changing it, even though there's way better technology out there. But I love that. And I think that Yeah, I love the classic I aspect too. of it. I think it's very cool. And I think that's what makes it the top. Okay, so I... You're, you're gonna you're gonna get killed here. So <laughs> I just had to say I, I I like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I've never been uh, in love with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I just never have. I think it's a cute little attraction. Uh, I think it's from you know it's it, it's a bit insulting. No, it's not. It's not insulting at all. It, it's it is what it is. And I know I hate that that, <laughs> that <laughs> you do saying. That. I don't know why I said it, but it is what it is. It is an older attraction. It's classic. It's the, it's like me saying I love it's small world, right? Yes, which I almost went for. <laughs> it's it, it's I I do and I enjoy it. And your your dad is the biggest small world fan there yes, is. That's true. And it's because of his childhood, and he remembers Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and he remembers it from mm -hmm. the New York World's Fair, right. 1964, 1965. He was there. He did it there. So it's this big thing. So for you, I think that's a you good connect point. Mm -hmm. with Mr. Toad's Wild Ride because you were on it when you were a kid, and right. it has this thing in your brain where it's the but that but, is a good point thank you but you but, have to move on with the times exactly which is why my disneyland pick is not an opening day disneyland attraction it is a, an attraction now i don't remember the date for this one. Oh, good because i don't off the top of my head i believe it was 1967 i don't know okay. the, i don't know the opening day but it is disneyland's pirates of the caribbean the best attraction That's a good one. <laughs> Disney has ever put into a theme park. Folks, I may be in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you something. First, uh, Walt Disney World fans, if you're listening, you've never been to Disneyland. I'm going to tell you something going to break your heart right now. Pirates in Disneyland is way better than it's the one in Walt Disney superior. World. It's completely superior. I agree. It's just better. It's just, it, from the beginning, you start, the attraction starts. First of all, there's no queue, which is weird. It is weird. There's just no queue for this attraction. If you're queue, if, if you're in line for more than ten minutes, you are somewhere else in Disneyland. <laughs> like you're not in a, in a you're not in a queue. It is really interesting. You're out in like New Orleans Square in the courtyard. You're, you're so not... right. It's so true. And the reason I remember I... waiting there for a while and being like, "Where am I?" Yeah, we were up by like Tarzan's we Treehouse. So yeah, we weren't even close to the attraction. <laughs> so we were there in a very busy day. And we weren't there. We were nowhere near the attraction. But yeah, that is kind of crazy. It is. What's what's cool about it is it's so different than the one in Magic Kingdom, where you get on the attraction. The load area is this little tiny load area, uh, and you you get on the attraction and you go through. To your to your left is a scene with uh, a guy playing. A, I think it's a banjo or a guitar. But I think it's a banjo. I think it's a banjo. Who looks like he's falling asleep. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And to your right is the Blue Bayou restaurant. Ah. Oh. Which is, it, if you haven't been on this attraction, think uh, 
the Grand Fiesta Tour featuring three Caballeros. Yes. It's like that at Epcot. And if you haven't been to the Blue Bayou, you should go because yeah, that's it's true. awesome. That's true. <laughs> but that's for another time. That's true. See, a couple of Disney nerds like us are talking Disney and we could talk <laughs> for hours. It's, it's really, it's this is insane. But back to Pirates. So some people believe that the the guy that, that, that falls asleep in the beginning of the attraction, oh, right? he's an old pirate. And it's it's more modern, not like more modern that. times, I but like it's that. like the you know eight, early eighteen hundreds, and he falls asleep, and dr- and the attraction of pirates is his dream. Right. Other people think it's a fantasy. Other people think it's not related. Whatever it is, after you see the old guy um, on your left, you go down a little hill into the attraction. Right. And it is on. I mean, you start <laughs> off with the tre- with the, it the, is on it with is. the treasure rooms. Yes. Uh, with all you know, the skeletons, I love the, the pirates, rooms. the old there's the the pirate that's in the bed with the skull, the dead pirate in the bed with the skull on the headboard, right? That people believe is an actual human skull on that headboard. Oh yes, you told me that. It's not. It used <laughs> to be. You, I remember that. There used to be bones, actual skeleton and bo- skeleton skulls and bones from the UCLA Medical Center in that's amazing. Uh, in Pirates of the Caribbean, actual Easy. deceased human skeletons. Well, they wouldn't be living human skeletons, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> they are—they really were point. human skeletons on that attraction. When Disney Imagineers were wed back then, as they were called, uh, well, well, for Walter Elias Disney, when they were designing the attraction, they had prop skeletons, right? But they didn't like how they looked. Right. So they went to UCLA Medical Center and got real That's skeletons really cool. and had them in the attraction. Over the years, technology got better. People got, you know, WDI got better at model building. And... They removed all of the real skeletons and skulls from the attraction. The one in the headboard looks really authentic, looks really real. I know from a source inside Disneyland who spoke with the Imagineers for Pirates of the Caribbean uh, that it, it, they are all removed. There are no skulls, no bones left on Pirates. But it's not a crazy jump. It's not because it, it used actually to be used to be true. Case. Yeah, yep. used to be true, but it's not anymore. So anyway, listen, the attraction is longer. There's more rooms. There's, there's, you know, it, it's just better. There's, there's better scene. There's more scenes. There's a couple of hills. There's, it's just, it, and of course they added Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes, and which always helps. And I love, yeah, Johnny Depp to anything can kind of help it. That's a really good point. Uh, and I love the, uh, I love the scene with Barbosa on the ship on, and the music from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies plays. I love I that. I know. Like, I love that too. And I do. I, I'm going to try to do it for you right now, right? It's like <laughs> oh, this. I can't wait. It's like, you know? Really well done. good, right? That was. I got to give it I was going to put the clip in, but that was good enough. No, you know what? That's better than the clip. So, again, it's it's better than Walt Disney Worlds. Just It's a longer attraction. You see more pirates. There's more scenes. There's the whole scene at the end with the when the, the building is coming down on top of you. And I feel like that's what I picture when I think about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and there's the logs like breaking yes. and the pirates are trying to hold on. It's and, amazing. Yeah, it's it is the I really can argue, I think. I think it can be argued that it's not only the best pirates, because I've seen the one at Shanghai Disneyland. Oh don't give me projection screens. <laughs> it's not that other park down the road at in Orlando that uses projection screens for everything, right? With their big ape attraction and other things. It's don't give me projection screens. I don't want projections and 3D. I want actual attractions with animatronics and moving parts. Yes. That's what makes pirates great. I totally that's what makes pirates timeless. And that's why (sighs) you can't top this. I have to admit defeat. You have to. Oh my gosh. We are tied. Yeah, see, and this wasn't planned. No, for... it wasn't planned. <laughs> I didn't I mean, even realize on. we could end up in a tie until no, I didn't think we started that talking. Either. I will say, to be honest, like, you guys all have to agree, even though I'm the one that brought up Mr. Toes, that you did actually beat me with pirates. Absolutely. Yeah, you're so dominating. So it is a legitimate tie. So what are we going to do? We're going to throw it to the listener? I think that's a good idea. I think so. We'll say... I'm going to put up the question when I put the episode up on my Facebook okay. page. So the, the the Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash ear to their fill. And when I post this, after you listen to this episode, when you listen to this part, go to the Facebook page. The question will be there. Who won the 
top this challenge. Amy and just so you know, myself. if you do, anyone who says you that- can't promise anybody anything, <laughs> you cannot bribe a listener. You can't. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> what were you going to offer? <laughs> I don't even know. Babysitting services? <laughs> yeah, I don't have too much. To when you come to Walt Disney World, Amy will watch your children, <laughs> so you can go to Morimoto. Oh, nice. Or Victoria and Alberts. No, but really, I, I am really curious to see. If anyone trusts you with their children. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to see what. Who won? And also, um, you know, what everyone, if anyone can top us, either one of us. Yeah. I that think would that's be interesting impossible. too. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. The, we, this is a lot of fun. It, it, it's something that I think this is a good idea. I think if. I like it too. If people respond, if, if. You know, you guys, the listener, responds well and you like it. I'd love to do more of these. Sure. This is a lot of fun. And I like doing podcasts with you because I can make fun of you and you have to stay married (laughs) to me. And I also make fun of you, too. Yeah. And because making fun of each other is not grounds for divorce. So we're staying staying (laughs) No, it was super fun. Thank you so much for having me on. This was really great. Well, thank you for coming on, Amy Elizabeth. My pleasure. All right. Thanks again. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There podcast. Thank you so much once again to my beautiful, my talented, my lovely, and if I don't say that, I'll get the forced <laughs> guest on the show today, my actually truly awesome wife, Amy. As I said, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback when she's on the show, so it's a lot of fun. And I, really, we love talking Disney. We're both Disney nerds at heart, so it's always a ton of fun to do a show with her. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this as much as we did recording it. It's Like I said, it's a ton of fun. These are always a lot of fun. So thank you again so, so much for listening. As always, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. And all I ask is if you did enjoy this episode, please just tell someone about it. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I may have. I apologize if I did. But you know how now it takes so long when you go to like a store and you use your credit or debit card and it has the chip in it? You put the darn card in the machine and it takes forever and you're standing there next to the the checkout person and you're like wondering and and hoping and grasping for something to talk about. The next time that happens to you and you're standing there and your chip card is in the reader and you have nothing to say, bring up the podcast. Just be like, hey man, you know what? I know of a good podcast you can listen to. There's this guy that does it. He's kind of fun. (laughs) I really appreciate that. So thank you again so, so much for listening. And just remember, there will be a new episode of the Ear to There podcast each and every Monday morning, as well as a new episode of the Ear to There podcast, Walt Disney World. I almost didn't get that out. Walt Disney World Word of the Week each and every Wednesday morning. So thank you again for listening. Until next time, have a great week. Bye-bye.